how's everyone doing it's cold there um, if you subscribe to my channel you know that I keep doing these videos on things I've got experiences of um, prison prison reforms prison issues policing levels gun crime knife crime um, and all that sort of stuff right today's video is on why so many people um, end up back in prison right um, because obviously the, there's a lot in the news about prison systems being overcrowded and um, short sentence pe like people that are on short sentences and stuff um, right well like I say I speak from the perspective as a former prisoner um, I've been out uh, about a week and a half now um, the reason that people um, end up back in prison right there's there's obviously there's various reasons <clears throat> there's various reasons why people end up back in prison some are just repeat offenders where they're just they're, they're just the better suited in prison than they are on the streets or like they just can't keep their hands to themselves whether it be fighting stealing or whatever but then there's people obviously right obviously people some people go to prison on remand right and then say that they're found not guilty then they get out of prison right then there's obviously people that get convicted like whether they plead guilty or they're found guilty at trial um then obviously say you get five years you do two and a half and then what happens then um when you get out you've got two and a half years on license which means that if you breach any of your license conditions you've got obviously you've got to go probation and stuff depending on whether you like what your risk is of reoffending and stuff uh, you'll have license conditions and stuff and they, they can be it can be pretty much anything now obviously if you breach any of them rules or break any of them rules you end up you just go you end up back in prison right and it could be like a little 28 day -er, um or like a fixed term recall ftr as it's known or it could be a full term recall where you end up doing you end up doing like the two and a half years that you've got left on your license or say you had two years left on your license and you they could say that no you're not a 28 day -er, you're staying in for the remainder of your senate for your um license so um but what that's what's happening is and what i've experienced myself and nearly experienced myself is that a lot of people that are getting sentenced to six to twelve months right obviously longer than that as well but six to twelve months then what's happening is people say that you've got a flat say you you've got a flat with a council right you're renting that flat um then what will happen is obviously say you're so we're talking about people that are in prison right so you're in prison right you've been sentenced right you're doing six months you're doing eight months you're doing 12 months right what's going to happen is while you're in prison you're going to end up um amassing rent arrears and stuff now obviously each landlord if it's privately owned or like a housing association or council like property um each like housing association or landlord are going to have um like a limit of what you can get like of rent arrears you can amass before you can before they're going to like try to get seek a notice of possession so in other words trying to evict you um and then what they do they start serving notices and notices now obviously say you're in prison and you've not got the funds behind you to be able to pay these rent arrears and stuff because you're in prison you're not earning money you can't work and all this stuff so you're amassing rent arrears rent arrears the letters are coming through the door thick and fast you might have a loved one your mum or something that's going to your property to ch check the mail and stuff like that and it's like rent arrear rent arrear right we're, we're seeking notice of possession and then they go through stage one stage two um and then what's happening is eventually um like people are coming to you like they go to bailiffs and stuff and then they can go to the high court these people can actually force um your locks and stuff change the locks um, and for all into, and then you, you're homeless so and for a short sentence it's ridiculous as well so what's happening is people are getting out of prison it nearly happened to me trust i it's um people are getting out of prison and they've got nowhere to go now as a convict right as a prisoner if you get out of prison and you've got nowhere to go say you've got no family behind you, you've got no friends or your friends have like they, they've abandoned you or you've had a family breakdown because you might have had a rough childhood or um like you separated from a partner because your partner couldn't stand the fact he was in prison again or for the first time or whatever so these lads are getting out they've got nowhere to go so they're scared and they're anxious and they're worried so 
and obviously they've got license conditions. Say you've got license conditions hanging over your head. What the lads are actually doing is they're actually going out, breaking the law, and going back to prison. Now that th that doesn't make sense, and I know why. I'm talking from a prisoner's perspective. It makes sense to me because it's better, surely, to be in prison with a roof over your head, three meals a day, um, use of a gym, TV in your cell, nice warm cell, um, drugs like mobile phones, prison alcohol, which is known as hooch, um, all at hand, as opposed to being homeless and on the streets and wondering where your next meal's coming from. Because when you leave prison, um, as a convicted prisoner, you only get £46, and I think about £5.20 uh, bus fare as well, so about £51, £52, yeah, he's, he's getting out with. And like I say, people are worried, they're anxious and they're scared. Now, some people, I've been reading stories in the media and stuff where people are celebrating going back to prison. And the reason people are celebrating is, again, just because of what I've just said, it's better to be in prison with three meals a day, three hot meals a day, roof over your head, TV in your cell, nice warm cell, free use of a gym, um, fucking illegal drugs, uh, like uh, illegal substances, alcohol, mobile phones, friends playing pool, table tennis, um, courses if you want them, all that good stuff, right? So... And that's because people are like these short sentences. Now, the thing is with these short sentences, like I'll, t I'll refer you to my case with me. I just got out after doing four and a half months, right? Um, and I nearly, I, I'm in, I'm still in big rent arrears, right? I, cu I couldn't afford to pay my rent and stuff. And my landlord, I've got to be honest, was is absolutely fantastic. But what happened is within the prison, like when I learned that. I was going to be in this situation and stuff, and these letters started coming through the door and stuff, and amassing these like rent arrears. Um, I freaked out and it stressed me out, and I became really anxious and worried. I've been homeless before. Um, an army charity called Safa got me into the property that I was in, um, and within the within the prison as well, um, there are there's a there's a housing charity called Shelter. Now, I, I'll be honest with you. If these people, if you if you go to prison, right, and these shelter people come and see you, do not rely on them for nothing. They're useless. The the nice girls and they're lovely to talk to, but the simple fact is they're useless. Like the last right, my I was speaking to the team leader of these housing charity, um, and she said I, I explained to her that I needed the address for my landlord um, and my local MP so I could write to them. And do you know what she said? I'll I'll be back before the end of the day. I'll be back. I didn't see her for the rest of my sentence, right? So, and it was only by pure chance that by me harassing my local council and by me writing to my local MP and an army charity called Safa, um, who then actually wrote to my landlord and to the council and stuff, asking him to review the decision. Um, uh, the decision, I need to explain this as well, right? When you go to prison, if you get sentenced to under 13 weeks, right? Um, you, you're entitled to full housing benefit for 13 weeks. So up to 13 weeks, right? Now, I end up doing 17 and a half weeks, right? Now, 17 and a half weeks, yeah? Because I was four and a half weeks over, right, this 13 weeks, the council blatantly refused to help me. So I thought, well, hold on. If they pay the 13 weeks, then my mum was going to pay the four and a half weeks shortfall. So it would have. So I wouldn't have been in a race when I got out, um, but the council played hardball with me, um, and refused. Um, obviously, if you're remanded, you get 52 weeks um, rent paid, but obviously I was convicted, so they'd only pay if you're sentenced just to 13 weeks or less. You can get housing benefit. Anything over that, um, you're on your own, right? And for people that are on remand, because obviously it can take a year to get up to trial. Um, they'll pay 52 weeks um, housing benefit if you are remanded. Um, but like I say, there's too many people that are on short sentences that are getting out and they've got nowhere to go. They've got, they're have got they homeless. They're fucked. Um, and there's no help there. The, this housing charity taught like they've got it all in hand and stuff. When in theory, what they're actually doing now within prisons is they're training prisoners that are on the cleaners. They're training them to deal with these people now. It's ridiculous, to be honest. I mean, I, I think it's a waste of taxpayers' money to have these fucking um, ch shelter housing charity 
a homeless charity in the prison because the fact is they've got no pull with their local authorities. They don't know what they're doing. Um, and they've got, like I say, the fact is they've got no pull. And when someone says to you, like, you can see that you're in a state of, like, stress and anxiety and everything. And you say, oh, we'll come back to you. And they don't come back to you for two and a half, three months, right? That that, that just shows you for what it is. So don't, don't bother with them. Honest to God, do not bother with them. I wrote to my local MP. Uh, my local MP actually wrote to my council. My council actually ended up, I think they paid four or five hundred pounds towards my rent. Um, but that was a portion. That was only because of the, of the amount of... I was I, I I was like a fucking dog with a bone meat. I wouldn't stop um, because at the end of the day, if I was to be homeless again, right, I don't want to go back to jail. Jail's easier, right? All that crap, it's fucking piece of piss. But you don't. No one wants to truly go back there. But then obviously, um, yeah, it's just a, it's a shit situation. But like I say, the the whole situation is a lot of people. My honest thing is, obviously, people get out, they breach the license conditions, they can't be asked going to probation. Um, the, 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 they break the license rules, they end up back in prison, right? That's just like they might have had a drink or they might be on drugs and they get, because they some people that have not got anywhere to go when they leave prison, they go to bail hostels, but obviously, again, limited to space and stuff like that. Um, and these bail hostels, in my opinion, from what I've, I've never been in one, but from what I've heard from the lads, they're, they're there for you to set up to fail. And if you fail in there, you end up back in prison. And then you get out and then you've got to go back in the hostel. Then you fail. Because obviously people have addicted. When people are in prison, they might go in prison as like teetotal. Not, they don't drink, they don't smoke, they don't do drugs. They might come out addicted to spice and stuff and other illegal drugs. They go back to these hostels. They get they get drug tested, like a swab and stuff in the mouth. They get drug tested and they have to be breathalyzed for alcohol. Now, if you blow like a certain, like over a certain millimetre, per 100 milliliters or something you, you you get recalled so you get back in prison then you get out you go back in this hostel you get breached you go back to prison and that's a vicious cycle and it needs to be broken but it, like i say the, the prison system and the penal system and the reform system is broken there i don't think the reform is just a made-up word so people like liz trust can have a job and feel important um but the housing situation is is, is drastic there's a lot of good lads in prison um, that, like, when they get out, they've got nothing. So, like I say, it's leading on to people stringing up or attempting to hang themselves, suicide attempts, or as soon as you get out, going out, repeat offending just to get back in prison. Because, like I said, when you get out and you don't know where your next meal coming from and stuff like that, and you don't know where your roof over your head is and stuff, the uncertainty, and the, it's scary. We're all convicts, man. We're all convicts. I'm six foot four, like 20 stone, rough fucking guy. But like when I learned that my property was in jeopardy of being taken away from me because I've been homeless before, um, I fought like fucking, to, like I, I fought to the end, right? And there was nothing that I wouldn't have done to, to have kept my property. But like I say, the simple fact is, is the, the prison system's broke. If you're on a short sentence, right, you should not be losing your property because another thing what makes me laugh as well, is when the council were refusing to help me with my situation, right? Until they end up giving me 400, 500 pounds, but that was only a few weeks, two weeks, three weeks before I left prison. For the rest of the months, they was refusing, right? So, but do you know what the weird thing was? If I ended up, so if the council said, right, because you're serving four weeks over this 13 weeks period, where we, because obviously they pay rent up to 13 weeks, because I was four and a half weeks over that, if I would have been made homeless because of that, I would have turned up on the council's doorstep with my bags, and said, right, um, I'm homeless. And then you know what would have, it would have done? They would have ended up putting me in a bed and breakfast or a hostel or something like that, which it ends up costing the council more. It would have cost the landlord thousands to evict me, would have cost the council hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds in fucking bed and breakfast and stuff to put me up. And all for the sake of a couple of hundred quid. It's ridiculous. Honestly, honestly, this is the reason why the system is broke. And this is why the prison system is a revolving door. And this is why so many people <clears throat> go back to prison. And when I'm reading about a, a drug, a, a drug, a druggie that was, he got done for shoplifting or mugging someone. I can't remember, but he was on license, right? So he was going straight back to prison. He was in the dock and he celebrated people. He celebrated going back to prison. Do you know why? Because prison's not a deterrent. And obviously 
people, some people are more adapted in prison than they are on the outside because people become institutionalised. If you've got nothing on the outside, you've got no friends and family on the outside, you've got no address, then you'd be better to be in prison. And that's a horrible, weird, crazy... What what realm does that become real? That you'd rather be in prison than be, like, on the... Like, you'd rather be in prison with a roof over your head, with three meals a day, like, with drugs and alcohol and mobile phones at, at, at your disposal, free use of a gym and all that stuff, rather than being on the streets because there's nothing, there's nothing for you on the outside. It, it, that just shows the system for what it is. Needs, more needs to be done to help prisoners that are on short sentences and stuff, where the government actually roll out a national thing where they say, right, people that are serving 12 months and less or whatever, you keep your properties. Over that, like, there's probably a, a limit where you've got to cut that off. But that's what should be done, in my honest opinion, um, to stop people reoffending, going back to prison and stuff. Obviously, there are the flip side of the coin where people just, they just go out and they commit robbery because they've got sticky fingers and they do what they're doing. And that's just, the, that's just how it is. All right, guys, speak to you soon. Bye.